People talk a lot about their dream car. And for me, this, my 2013 Audi S4, is pretty much it. It's my realistic dream car. Obviously, you know, a, a Chiron wouldn't go bad in my, my hypothetical luxury mansion garage, but for me, the Audi S4, specifically this, the B8.5 model, 2013 and onwards, is just the right balance of practicality, of performance, and of nice driving. Now I picked up my 2013 Audi S4 used with around about 58 to 59,000 miles on it and for around 16,000 pounds. For that, you're getting quite a lot for your money. You get a supercharged V6 up front with all wheel drive through a seven speed dual clutch gearbox. We'll show you in a second, but that means that this car is rapid. You get 330 horsepower as stock, although you can, if you're a bit more adventurous, uh, tune it, stage one, just ECU remap software only to 420. Then if you feel even more adventurous and fancy changing the supercharger pulley, you can get to 480. As for the moment though, this car is entirely stock. Stock brakes, stock power, stock suspension, everything is as sold from the factory, maybe with a few replacement parts. I'm pretty happy with that at the moment, although in time I will uh, be changing a few things. There are a few really easy or supposedly easy mods that you can do, including swapping for the Brembo four piston uh, brakes that come from the Audi Q5 S line. So I might switch to those up front. And obviously the, the power is an obvious one and even things like poly bushes in the suspension. As you can tell, this thing powers off the line. That wasn't even a launch control start. That was just me burying my foot and I actually didn't even go full throttle. That's also in the just standard drive gearbox mode. If you want to stick it into the sports gearbox mode, then it holds revs for longer. It sharpens the throttle response. It makes the steering a little bit quicker and it just makes it a completely different animal. If you were to take this on track, I think you would have a very, very good time with it because it's very easy to place. It's very easy to feed in the power gently and have it pull you, absolutely drag you through a corner. The 0 to 60 of this is somewhere between 4.5 and 5 seconds, depending on what launch, uh, you know, how, how well the launch you get uh, and all that sort of stuff. And uh, top speed is electronically limited to the 150 to 160 mile an hour range. You can have it de-restricted if you want, although that normally comes as part and parcel with the, the stage one ECU remaps. Um, and then, you know, the top speed is a little bit higher even then. It's enough power to pin you back in your seat, at least when you're not stuck in traffic like me. It is an incredibly fun car to drive. Handling wise, it is, again, really easy to place. It's pretty sharp. It does feel a bit on the heavy side. It's around 1.6 tons, uh, which isn't the lightest thing in the world, but it's not very difficult to drive quickly. The biggest problem that you will encounter is understeer, as with all four-wheel drive cars, especially you know ones with this much power. And so you do have to modify your driving style a bit to get the most out of the car, but it absolutely rockets you out of corners and is an incredibly easy to drive once you kind of get the hang of it um, car that I have no problems and taking on some country lanes or even taking to a track. You really don't get much body roll here. The suspension, at least in the S4 model, gets stiffer springs and different dampers, uh, which does mean that you get a slightly firmer ride than usual, but uh, you get a lot more grip through the corners, which especially because of the added power you have, is really quite necessary. I should probably explain a little bit more about the gearbox modes I mentioned. Basically, you can leave it in drive, uh, which is just where you pull the lever back to D and that's pretty much it. Uh, and that will drive as pretty, you know, normally the throttle response is a little bit slow, but it's very easy to, to drive around with as a, a daily usage. When you pull it into sport, which I've just done, it will downshift to pretty much the lowest gear it can. Now, because I've only been pottering along, it's only put it into third, whereas if I were uh, going a bit quicker, it might have gone into second there. It will hold the revs for a lot longer, all the way to red line if you are, uh, 
you know, if, if you've buried your foot enough into the throttle. Uh, the throttle response is sharpened significantly, which has almost caught me out a few times uh, when switching on before going around a roundabout, for example. I basically almost understeered off because I forgot the throttle response had changed. The steering gets a little bit heavier and makes it a little bit easier to, to well, place the car. Uh, and let's plant my foot and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's enough. It just makes me smile. Uh, it sounds fantastic even in drive and especially when it has the little DSG farts. It's just, it, it's fantastic. It puts a smile on my face almost every time I get in the car, even if I'm just going to the shops, just knowing that even in drive, I can plop my foot and I get punched back into my seat. Now my specific car does have a slight issue, which is when you're doing uh, over 100 miles an hour, uh, when you lightly step on the brakes, uh, there is a significant vibration from the rear. I'm not sure if it's brake discs. I am trying uh, some poly bushes in the rear uh, to see if that helps. Uh, and I probably will replace the, the rear discs anyway, but um, something, you know, a quirk of, of this particular vehicle. Practicality is definitely a strong suit for this. I picked up the Avant model, which is essentially an estate or a wagon as the Americans call it, uh, which means that I can fit my mountain bike in the back. I can fold the seats down and have a whole load of space, or I can just, you know, fit the shopping or the in-laws pets in the boot, as well as the in-laws in the back seats as well, with no problems. There's quite a lot about the car that makes it a super easy to use daily driver. It has an electric power steering rack, which while it can feel a little bit light and a little bit more disconnected than I would maybe like at times, especially when in yeah, spiritedly driving, it does feel very easy, uh, very light uh, when you're at a standstill. So maneuvering the car, even though it's reasonably sized, is really, really easy. In terms of the seats, these are the Sports S-Line seats, and I don't know why you'd buy one of these without them. This is the Alcantara-centered one, which is kind of my personal preference because it means that you get a nice, soft, comfortable fabric, and then the leather to hold you in at the sides. The ride when you're just driving around town or even on the motorway is pretty compliant, and it's a pretty nice place to be. It's obviously not a luxury car, and it is the more sporty version of the standard, you know, A4, so you do get more road noise from the absolute paddles of tires, even though there is a bit more sound deadening in here than a few of my previous cars, and it's just a pretty comfortable, pretty easy place to be. It's got a pretty reasonable cruise control setup, although it isn't adaptive cruise control, um, and no, you know, forward collision braking or anything like that, but, you know, I bought the car to have fun in, and to be a daily driver, so I'm not that worried about not having those sorts of things. The infotainment system that came in the S4s is pretty much the same one that you find in most Audis of this year and this model. Uh, my model has the Audi concert radio, which means that it doesn't have uh, sat-nav built into it. It uh, doesn't have anything like Android Auto or Apple CarPlay by default. Um, so what I have done is added a sort of man in the middle box that sits just above the glove box and uh, has a touchscreen digitizer on top of the standard display. And I can plug my phone in and use Android Auto or Apple CarPlay uh, wired or wirelessly actually, and it's really, really useful. It's a super easy addition to do. It does cost you a fair bit, around about 500 pounds, but it is a very worthwhile addition and it's not something that you can go to Audi and have them do for you. Uh, they will not be able to, to upgrade anything. Um, by default. And like I said, for me, this is the perfect balance of speed, of practicality, of comfort, of ride quality, and of price, all that stuff. It, it just, I know that there are faster cars. I know that there are more practical cars. I know that there are more comfortable, but none quite encompass everything that I want in a car. The, the modability that this specific model has, the feature set, and like I said, the performance, the handling, uh, the one thing that I would like on this car that I don't think I'd be able to retrofit is the fancier um, e-diff or the, the, the sports differential, which is basically a very fancy LSD. It's uh, a very weird design of an LSD, but uh, it helps with the understeer characteristics that are a bit common 
on these four-wheel drive cars. Of course, if you picked up, say, the BMW what's 340i, that's probably a similar class to this car, um, and that wouldn't have that problem because it's rear-wheel drive, but it wouldn't quite have the same absolute just rocket sensation when you plant your foot midway through a corner and just drags you out. It's, it's absolutely incredible, and I am addicted to driving this car. It's fantastic. So should you go and buy one of these? Well, of course, it depends on what you're after. If you're after just a, a, a fun daily driver, then this might be a little bit overkill. If you're looking for something that you can use as a daily driver, but also do 150 on, uh, on the autobahns and take it to the Nürburgring, this might be for you. It's a very fun, very practical, but very quick daily driver car. And the fact that you can mod it to high hell and do insane quarter mile times and take it around tracks with, you know, not lap record setting times, but impressive times is pretty cool. It's also a lot cheaper than you might think. Like I said, I paid 16,000 for this one. And well, this is a 2013 model and the kind of pricing is a little bit all, all, all over the place thanks to the coronavirus. It's still a pretty reasonable life money, especially considering you're getting 330 horsepower at stock and a very nice all wheel drive estate as well. So that's pretty much it from me from at the wheel of my S4. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this one, then of course you can hit that subscribe button. And I did a video of a Renault press event with uh, their E-Tech hybrid car. So if you're interested in checking that out, feel free to do so. Uh, and that is pretty much it. I plan on doing a whole load more videos, about one a week um, currently planned. So feel free to check back next week. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about the S4 or you know, me or anything else, feel free to leave that in the comments below and let me know what you think of my nice car. And you know, inevitably you're gonna disagree with me. So feel free to do that in the comments. <laughs> cool, I'll catch you guys in the next video. See ya.